Hey guys, Mr. Middleton here. Um, today we're going to talk about relations and functions. At the end of this uh, lesson, you should be able to represent relations in a variety of ways. You should be able to identify the domain and range of a relation, and you should be able to differentiate between a relation and a function. Okay. All right. So let's define relation. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. Um, we can use it for graphing. But a relation is just the, the whole set of the points that go together. And we can show relations in a bunch of different ways. So we can um, list them as ordered pairs. We can graph them. Um, and then we can put them in a table. Use a table. And we can see them in a mapping diagram. Okay, so the first three you should be pretty familiar with. Um, the last one we'll look at uh, in these notes as well. The domain is the x values or of a relation. Um, the range is the y values. Independent and dependent, if you'd like to. Okay. Um, independent for the x values because you choose those typically. Dependent for the y values because those are whatever. They're kind of at the whim of x, whatever x is, changes y. We'll see that as we get into functions. All right. So, when we list the domain in the range, what we do is we will look at the x values, order them from least to greatest, and so for this um, relation, set of ordered pairs, I want to write the domain. The domain is just the x values from least to greatest, so I'll go negative 3, 2, 4, 6, negative 3, 2, 4, 6, okay. Now, write them from least to greatest, that'll help you out. Um, do that same thing for the range. Remember, the range is the y values. Negative 1, 4, 7. All right, we do get bracketed after you're done. Notice, not a parenthesis. Okay. All right, now when a domain or a range value is repeated, we only need to write the repeated value once. Okay, so notice we have negative one twice for our y values, but it's only written in the range once. All right, so we see the domain and range in a set of ordered pairs. We can do the same thing in um, a table and in a graph. So here's our table, Remember our x values start first, y, until the domain goes with our x. Our domain is pretty simple. One, two, three. Those are all the x values. Three is repeated in the table, but we only write it once. Range goes from 70, 84, 92, 99. All right. For the graph, um, we have to read the, the graph here, but we can still write our domain based off our x values. So here we have negative 3, negative 2, 0, and then we have 3 here. Okay, but um, again, we have repeated 3, so I'm not gonna, but I'm not going to write them twice. Then our range, since I'm going from least to greatest, I know I'll work bottom up, so I have negative 1. 0, 1, 2. And again, I have two twos, but I'm only going to write it once. I only have to write, write the values. I don't have to write every time it happens. Okay? All right. Put them to the back. All right, now we're going to talk about the difference between a relation and a function. And a, a relation, a function is a relation that ex assigns exactly exactly okay, 
That means no more, no less. And exactly one value in the range to each value of the domain. In other words, a function is a relation which the x value does not repeat. It means we only have one x value. The x always comes out to be the same thing. Okay, so one test for this, we'll, we'll show you how we can look at this in the, in the different ways that we can see a relation. But the one test of this is the vertical line test. If any um, vertical line, okay, vertical, passes through more than one point in the relation, the relation is not a function. Okay, and the reason that we use the vertical line test is remember that our, um, our x's are measured left and right, right? So this would be like negative 3, or can you see that here? Okay, so this would be like negative 3, this would be negative 3, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 3, 2. Notice that when I'm listing those points, all the x values are negative 3. So what that shows is if at some point, two points crossed over at the same time in the same vertical line, you guys see that two points are touching this vertical line, that means their values are 3, 0, and 3, 2. This is not a function. Okay, so this is not a function. Does not pass a vertical line test. Okay, and that will be the explanation for all these, so I'm not going to write that again if that happens again. Okay, so now we have another graph, um, and here, where are you at? It's a circle. So, again, does this pass the vertical line test? No, it doesn't. On the same vertical line, we have two points. No, does not pass vertical line test. And then number three, we have a vertical line. Is there any point where two lines or the line crosses twice? And the answer is no. So yes, it does pass the vertical line test. Is this a relation is this relation a function? Yes. Alright. So before I go to the next thing, um, I'm just gonna kinda explain how I remember function, how I teach it. Okay, I want you to think about function as something that works. Okay? Think about function as something that works. Function works. Okay. And then I think of it as a vending machine. Okay, when you go to a vending machine, you want to get you know good food in the vending machine. You got some Skittles here, but you know the vending machines now usually have like one weird thing that you're like, why is that in the vending machine? Like, why are you putting an apple in the vending machine? I don't want that. All right, if you go to that vending machine and if you push a button, you could get the Skittles or the apple. Are you going to put your money? Are you going to put your dollar fifty? in that vending machine if you don't know whether you're going to get Apple or Skittles. No, you're not. You shouldn't. Okay. What a function says is when I put in X, I know exactly what I'm going to get. So here, at this point, when we put in 3, I need to know that I'm either going to get 0 or that I'm going to get 2. The fact that I might get Skittles or I might get an Apple makes me not want to use the machine. The fact that I might when I put in three, zero or three, I might get zero. Or I might get two. It makes me not want to use this this relation because it doesn't work. It's, it's not a function. Okay. So every x has to have only one y. All right. Now let's look at it in a set of ordered pairs. So the thing that you have to look at because this is what matters. We're looking at our x values. Okay. We have four. We have negative two, zero, negative two. Okay. Negative two repeats. So that means if I put a negative two. I could get out negative 2 or I could get out 5. That means that this does not pass. The x values repeat. No x values repeat. Okay, and I'll go into that just a little bit more. It would be okay if we have negative 2, 2, and then we had negative 2, 2 again, because that means that every time we put a negative 2, we get negative 2. But that's not what happens. All right, here. We put in negative 1, we get 6. Put in 3, we get 6. Put in 6, we get 6. Put in 7, we get 6. Is this a function? Yes. Okay, and I always think of this situation like you go to a vending machine, and the vending machine's like a Coke machine. And, like, if you've seen all those fancy Coke machines when you go somewhere, 
like really expensive. They just have the same thing all all over the place. They're like a whole vending machine full of, full of cokes. Okay, is it when I push negative one? Do I know what I'm getting out? Yeah, and I'm getting out six. When I put three in, I know I'm putting, getting out six. When I put six in, I know I'm getting out six. When I put seven in, I know I'm getting out six. If I go to a coke machine full of coke, when I push a button, I know I'm getting out the one coke or a coke. It means it works. Like I put in and I get what I expect out every time. It functions. All right. So here we go. Mapping diagram. This might be something that you're not as familiar with. And all this mapping diagram is, is in the first um, oval, we're putting in our x values, our domain. In the second, we're putting in our range. So my domain, I'm just going to list it vertically. All the x values, no repeats. Here, all the x values are two. In my range, I'm going to put all the y values, no repeats. Negative 3, 0, 5, 12. And then I'm going to draw a line that goes from my x values to my y values. So 2 goes to negative 3, 2 goes to 0, 2 goes to 5, 2 goes to 12. Is this a function? No. The reason is that 2 has multiple outcomes. 2 has multiple y values. Okay, if I went to a vending machine and I press 2, I don't know what I'm going to get. Am I going to get negative 3, 0, 5, or 12? I don't know. It doesn't work. Okay, I go to number 2. Um, I'm going to write my, my x values, negative 1, 2, uh, 0, let's do that. Negative 1, 0, 2, 7. I'm going to list these from least to greatest, so negative 4, 3, 8. Okay, so 7, negative 4, got that. 2, 8, got that. Negative 1, 3, got that. 0, 8, got that. Is this a function? Now, a lot of people want to say, no, there's two 8s, but it is a function. Because remember, we're, we're controlling this part. When I put in negative 1, I know I'm going to get 3. When I put in 0, I know I'm going to get 8. When I put in 2, I know I'm going to get 8. I, I, I push this one. This is my independent. This is the action that I take. The action that I take has to have a sure outcome for it to be a function. And all these have sure outcomes. Okay? So that's relations and functions, being able to tell the difference between them, um, being able to use the mapping diagrams. Um, we'll work on some more of these tomorrow. See ya.